Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Sultai Mutate deck in Standard, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and one of the key cards in the deck is a Dirge Bat, a 4 mana 3 3 bat with flash and flying that mutates for 6 mana, and whenever this creature mutates, destroy targeted creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. So nice repeatable removal spell. We can of course play the bat for 4 mana and then mutate another creature onto it to still get the ability, or we can mutate the bat for 6 mana and get the effect right away. So we do have quite a bit of flexibility there, and that does give the deck a nice bit of removal, because otherwise we're an all-creature deck. We even have Umori as our companion, naming creatures, so we can only play creatures in the deck, and gives all our creatures a 1 mana discount. So the Dirge Bat is a pretty important piece here to still give us a bit of interaction. Otherwise we've got kind of the usual suspects in a Mutate deck, so let's quickly take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana we've got Arboreal Grazer, as well as Gilded Goose, and so 1 mana Accelerants that are great for mutating, as we get to maybe play the Goose or the Grazer on turn 1, and then turn 2, for 3 mana we can mutate the Migratory Great Horn, which lets us search up another basic land whenever it mutates, so that can also quickly ramp, especially if we get multiple copies of the Great Horn going. Then we also have two copies of Paradise Druid as another 2 mana ramp creature that can still be mutated onto and will still keep Hexproof as long as it's untapped. And then the full playset of the Polywalk Symbiote as another pretty important card in these Mutate decks as a 2 mana 1-3 that makes mutating and playing creatures with Mutate 1 cheaper, so we get a discount on both halves. And whenever we cast a creature spell, if it has Mutate, we get to draw a card and then discard a card, so we can get rid of extra lands or mana creatures that we no longer need in the late game and dig for more action. And then another cool synergy with the Polywalk Symbiote in this deck is with the Brokos Apex of Forever as kind of our Sultai uh, payoff card as a 5 mana 6-6 six, six, Nightmare Beast Elemental with Trample that mutates for 5 mana, but we can also cast Brokos from our graveyard using its mutate ability, so we can potentially discard Brokos to the Polywalk Symbiote's ability and then still mutate it out of the graveyard for value. Then we also have two copies of Gem Razor as a 4 mana 4 4 Reach Trampler with Mutate for 1 and double green, and whenever this creature mutates, we can destroy an artifact or enchantment an opponent controls. Also, pretty nice against cards like Fires of Invention. And then we also have the full playset of Parcel Beast as a 4 mana 2 4 that mutates for a blue and a green. And then we can uh, pay 1 mana and tap the creature to look at the top card. And if it's a land, it goes straight into play, so even ramps us. And otherwise, we can put it into our hands. So nice card draw engine. And then finally, we've got the full playset of Hydroid Crisis as another nice mutate target. For X, a blue and a green, we get a Flying Trampling 0 0 that enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And when we cast this, we gain half of X life and draw half X cards around it down each time. And the Hydroid Crisis is great for mutate purposes because it's a 0 0 with plus 1 plus 1 counters. So if we mutate onto the Crisis, it's going to keep all those plus 1 plus 1 counters. So it's going to just uh, get even bigger. And Flying and Trample are pretty nice keywords as well, and just makes for a nice mana sink when we're ramping this much with the migratory greathorns and friends. So the reason we're not playing the Styrix in this build is mainly because of cards like Hydroid Crisis that don't really synergize too well with it, but you can definitely build mutate decks with uh, the Styrix as another nice payoff for mutating. And then looking at the mana base, we've got uh, four Sultai Triomes, and then all 12 Shock Lands, Breeding Pool, Overgrown Tomb, Water Grave, and then plenty of basic lands to search up with the Migratory Greathorn, four forests, four swamps, and four islands. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Numori deck, so could be the mirror match of sorts. Hand seems reasonable, we're missing a mutate creature to go with the symbiote, but we can maybe play a small Hydroid Crisis to draw into one. Turn to symbiote, turn 3 Umori, take it from there. Umori also synergizes nicely with the Hydroids. Zero point also on Sultai. Hmm. 
Alright, the dirge bat's nice. So get to take out Umori. And then probably mutate onto the Grazer. Now we've got Gem Racer as another way to trigger Mutate on the bat. Alright, opponent with the Hemophage. Still has Hexproof, so pretty good blocker. So what do we want to do? Can play Crisis for 4. And still attack with the bats. I could offer the trade with Omori too, which I wouldn't mind. But we'll play the Crisis first then. Opponent takes it, down to 5. Well, they can't really tap this, otherwise it dies to the bat. Unless they've got their own bats. It's gonna be an Uro instead. And another Paradise Druids. Alright, so I can just mutate anything onto the Hydroids. And that should be game. Sweet. Hydroid grows onto an 8 8. And attack for 11 in the air. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This ends okay. Facing a Lurus deck. And it looks like cycling. Well, I've got the bat as removal. So I might be better off just casting the bat next turn and then mutating parcel beasts onto it the turn after. Alternatively, I could play Umori, and then if I draw another untapped land in the next two draw steps, I can mutate the bat. Although that also relies on me not losing any of my mana creatures, which is not a given, given that they could have a go for blood. Does Great Horn change anything? I think the plan's still the same. Play bats, take a beating from the fox, end of turn, flash in the bat, and then take it from there. Yeah, the threat of activation on the fox is pretty annoying, since they always get to sneak in a free attack, even if they don't plan to cycle that turn. It kind of reads like... Pay one mana, put a plus one plus one counter on this card. Which is pretty powerful if you think about it. Already down to eight. Definitely within Zenith Flare range. If they cycle some more. So let's kill some creatures. An untapped plan would have been nice, because then I could have mutated Great Horn and then Parcel Beast to generate even more mana. So this Triumph is not doing us any favors. Or I can just mutate once. Maybe that's better. And let them keep the Rescuer. And we'll get an island. Or actually, yeah, island seems fine. With this many parcel beasts in hand. 
I'm gonna play defense. I'm gonna try and ramp so we can play big hydroid crisis to get a bit of life back. If their turn is just lure us, get back fox, that's not too bad, because then we can mutate a bunch. Not sure what to make of this attack. Maybe they have a go for blood. They want me to block with a great horn so they can finish it off with a rescuer fighting. Uh, I'll block. Uh, they're just gonna Zenith Flare the Great Horn. It's one fewer Zenith Flare we need to worry about. So I can play Krasis for five. Sure. Double Stinger and Double Rescuer is definitely going to add up. So, desperately need to find another bat, and there it is. Alright, this could be a fun turn. Gotta kill the stingers as our first priority. Really want to start attacking, but probably need every single blocker back. Blitz of the Thunder Raptor, that's new. Haven't seen that one before in cycling decks. Well, the good news is that our opponent's empty-handed. The bad news is that they have a Lurus that we can't currently deal with. That's gonna probably kill me pretty quickly. Can sack the food to survive. Parcel beasts, let's see what you got. 
All right. So crisis for seven. Double stinger, so a triple cycle will do it. Thanks with all. Might be dead here anyway. Yeah, take six. Alright, GG's. Yeah, that uh, Blitz definitely did a lot of work this game, otherwise we would have been able to keep mutating and killing their creatures with the Dirge Bat. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn to Symbiote, turn 3, mutate Greathorn, take it from there. Turn on Healer Sock. And where's Arboreal Grazer when you need him? Gem Racer still has reach and uh, of course Dirge Bat flies, so we do have quite a bit of interaction against flying creatures. So this could be winnable. So decisions, decisions. I can just cast the Gem Racer. Could try and ambush with a Dirge Bat, but that can go poorly if they have a Rally of Wings. But if they're forced to use Rally this turn, I guess I'm not too upset. So we'll pass. Right. Let's see if they have their Rally. Would like to keep lands. One gem racer can probably go. Alright, no rally. Next turn I can mute it onto the bat, kill a creature. Get the ball rolling. And Hushbringer does not stop mutate, despite it looking like an ETB effect. So let's mutate Greathorn. Get two more lands, and then we've got a giant Hydroid Crisis coming up. So we are in decent shape. And Hydroid Crisis is on cast, so also doesn't get stopped by the Hushbringer. Let's mutate Brocos. Not our bats. Gem Razor can go now. Could have also played Umori first and then mutated Brocos. Alright, and our opponents had enough. So yeah, the flying matchup is pretty manageable with all these reach and flying creatures we have. And the Dirge Bat also pretty important at killing Empyrean Eagles and the Skycat Sovereign. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. A reasonable opening hands. Double symbiote to make sure we draw into whatever we need. Can discard Brocos and mutate it out of the graveyard. Now 
Not sure what deck her opponent's playing. Some sort of team or ramp. Nissa. Yeah, that's still a legal card. Nissa has fallen out of favor recently, but still a very powerful planeswalker. So I think the plan is just to cast Bats next turn and then mutate onto it afterwards. To take out Nyssa. But they will get a turn with uh, Nyssa's passive. Thassa's Oracle, interesting. Now I will need another green mana if I want to mutate this out of the graveyards. Otherwise I can just mutate the Parcel Beast onto the bats. Take six. Uh, there's my green mana. It is going to be a little bit painful, but it's going to be a necessary evil, I think. Alternatively, I can go Symbiote. But it also needs one extra blue mana if I want to go Symbiote into Parcel Beast. I could actually just attack Nissa. Although I guess they have Grazer to block, so never mind. Discard another Brokos. We'll kill Nissa and play defense. And if Brokos can hold here, we definitely have the late game covered. Alright, so where do we want to go next? Symbiotes mutates Greathorn for one mana. Or I can play Omori and then mutate Greathorn for one mana. It's maybe better. And discard the symbiotes. I think I can start attacking. Put on chumps. Song of Creation. Alright, that makes a lot of sense. So I've got to try and kill them as soon as possible or find a gem razor to blow up Song of Creation. So I could just cast a giant hydroid crisis this turn to hope to draw into one. And then X equals 5, 6 here, thanks to Omori. No gem razors. So they can cast their Uro out of the graveyards. Maybe attacking and letting them chump with the Oracle was a mistake, because I made it easier for them to maybe escape Uro. But I guess it only needs four cards in graveyards, so they had plenty already. More Uros. I don't think I'll be able to kill them next turn. Although I can get pretty close. I can mutate onto the Krasis to 
make it bigger and then mutate onto Brocco's dirge bats to kill a blocker. So I might be able to kill them if they've got nothing else. So yeah, mutate Great Horn onto the Krasis. Alright, opponent concedes. Yeah, mutate Great Horn on Krasis to give it plus three power, and then mutate two parcel beasts on the dirge pad to kill two blockers, attack with everyone, and that should be game. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Geruda deck, which is a pretty bad matchup. Dirge Band is kind of the key to potentially having a chance, so. I guess I'll keep this. Don't even get to play Great Horn on two. But at least we'll uh, be able to ramp a bit. Could also play Umori before we play Great Horn. Because, yeah, I don't necessarily need to play the bat next turn already. Or I could go for end of turn bat, untap, and then mutate a Great Horn onto the bat to maybe kill Paradise Druid and keep them off mana. Although I don't know if keeping them off mana is the way to go. I think just killing the Girudas, hoping they don't get too many of them, is the way to go. So, I think I'm just gonna mutate Great Horn then. And getting a clock going in the air is also pretty nice. Haven plus another Druids. No attacks. There's Brocos. Right, I guess we mutate Brocos and get in there for six. This way, if they hit a Kogla and fight, it's at least a trade. They hit a Spark Double. And either Dream Trawler or Thassa. Goes for Thassa. And hits Charming Prince. And just gains a bit of life. Alright, well, I guess we can play Symbiote and then still mutate the bats. Attack with Brocos, and then wait to mutate a bat until they maybe target something with Thassa. Or maybe I can remove their devotion so Thassa doesn't become a creature anymore. They have more than one Geruda, so can't really mess them up in response to a Spark Double. Opponent uh, moves to combat. Attacks. They could also use Thassa to tap my Brocos down.
Alright, let's see what happens. They have another Spark Double in hand. They hit my Dirge Bats. If they don't hit something else with a Thassa Blink here, they would be dead on board, thanks to the Trampling Brokos. But they hit a Guard Mage, which is probably going to keep them alive here. Seven life, two Flying Blockers. So what do I need to hit here? A Mutate creature would do it. So let's cycle and find out. Another Goose, so close. If we hit a Mutate creature, can Mutate onto the Bat, kill their Dirge Bat or Guard Mage attack, they would block... I guess it would go to one, so they would still potentially survive depending on what Mutate creature we hit. Yeah, that's a Heartbreaker. Definitely a pretty difficult matchup, so even getting this close feels bad. So, yeah, not much I can do here. Can attack and hope they make a mistake. From their position, maybe using Thassa to tap down Brokos was safer than hoping to hit something with Juruda. Alright, jeez. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Double symbiote into dirge bats, I'll keep. Opponent's not playing any companions. And a Sacred Foundry, so it could be a Winota deck. In which case we do have the Dirge Bats to maybe kill Winota at instant speed. Let's get in there. Could see an end of turn raise the alarm. Yep. So very likely to be a Winota deck, so keeping up that instant speed dirge path is going to be key. Chandra can also make two non-human tokens to attack with. So sadly I can't afford to really do anything here other than keep up dirge path. So... One symbiote could attack, don't know if that's worth it. Sure, I'll go after Chandra. Because my opponent could also read into the situation, figure out I might be holding the bat and not play Winota yet, and then we kind of waste our turn. Could always decide to mutate and kill Chandra. But, uh... Especially if they're running Agents of Treachery, giving them a single Winota trigger could be dangerous. Alright, they're on a black version. Don't worry. I brought company. And there's Winota, alright. We know it's all down. Alright, we don't have another mutate creature to follow up with. I can attack Chandra. If they have another Winota, we're still in trouble. And this turn probably go Goose plus Umori. Next turn play Krasis. Or I can play Krasis now to 
try and draw into a mutate creature. At least if they're not playing blue, they might not have agents to hit with Winota. Alright, Chandra down. And then next turn I can play a big crisis to maybe refuel. Charming Prince, it's not too bad. So not sure what the appeal of playing black over blue is in this deck. But I'm sure we'll find out. Another bat is excellent. So these are human, these are non-human, so can mutate bat on that, kill the two tokens, and then we don't have to worry about Winota as much. Sounds like a plan. Can attack first, maybe blow up a double block. Opponent's just jumping. I guess I don't have to play bat now, I can wait. Not a Winota. Yeah, Dirge Bat having Flash is pretty key here. And our opponent explodes, so having instant speed answers to Winota definitely helps out in the matchup. So, yeah, overall, this Soul Time Mutate deck, it probably is still unfavored in the Cycling and Juruda matchups, as we've seen those seem winnable, but a lot has to go right for us to win those games. Haven't uh, tested much against the new Yorion decks, but uh, I can see those being pretty tough as well. But against any like more aggressive creature-based deck, like uh, Monorad, we saw blue-white flyers in action, I think we've got a pretty good chance with our mix of early big green creatures, thanks to the ramp and then Dirge Bat to finish off any potential creatures or planeswalkers. Also against the other Umori decks, being able to play black for bats and kill their big mutate stacks is uh, pretty important. So I kind of see this mutate deck as a mutate deck that can beat the other mutate decks, but is maybe a little bit softer to the all-in combo decks like uh, Cycling and Geruda. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.